Yeah, so I wanted to show you guys this before we start this haircut tutorial just because I thought it was a dope idea. Christian Perez came up with this idea. Check it out. So you know about the Facebook groups? I think for a lot of people, they're super help helpful. Um, he came up with the idea of, I mean, I feel like we have a like a, our own culture with 245. Like we have almost a movement, man, right? Almost a movement. So 245 has its own Facebook group. And it's already pretty active. There's 222 members. This is the first time that I really promoted uh, that I promoted on my YouTube channel. So, um, if you are not a part of this Facebook group and you just want to be a part of a, a dope community of barbers who obviously are like-minded because you guys are on this YouTube channel, you guys are a big influence for me and Tomb 45. So, we'd love to have a community within Facebook. So, make sure you follow. I'll put a link in the description below. And yo, the Orlando premiere is a week away. Not even. It's this weekend. It's the 3rd through the 5th. If you're not going to the premiere, you haven't made the jump, make the jump. It'll be the best decision you've made in your career. It changed my life. So I'll see you guys at the Orlando premiere. In this haircut tutorial, we do kind of a mid to low drop fade um, cut. I think it came out pretty dope. It's bald on the sides with a little bit of a, a C cup. Um, this particular client has some imperfections in his hair and um, I'll explain a little bit how I fixed it how I made the illusion that he doesn't right hopefully you guys learn from it and enjoy the video and if you do please smash the like button subscribe if you're not already subscribed it helps the channel out immensely and it keeps me motivated man to see you guys in the comment section and all that stuff but like always much love see you guys at the end of the video enjoy let's go so we're going to use the custom T-Islands by B. Clark, very popular. You get those on 245.com, the War Colors Magic Clips, and the Super ZRs. And we're going to use the outliner blades to start our first guideline. I pretty much, you know, with ball fades, you want to start your first guideline always. And I, I, I do it in, in a way that it will contour the, his head shape, right? Afterwards, I'm using the Andy shavers get that extra tightness so this is the one and a half blade on a detachable clipper they're all the same regardless of what detachable clipper you use going with the grain going with the grain just makes it look fuller makes it look um, thicker the hair So now we're going with no guard, blade open. We're going to start our next guideline. So what you'll see when we're done is you'll see two guidelines. Here I'm showing you guys kind of how I'm using the clipper. And I'm being careful to keep the darkness of the C cup or the arch on the hairline. Here we have the one guard all the way open. And this will make our next guideline so if you're counting you'll see three guidelines those are going to guide you throughout the cut to help you to help you stay organized if you do nice clean guidelines you'll have a more detailed organized haircut won't get lost in between your, your fade i pointed out um that the hair right there at the end of the arch um the peak of the c cup it's um it's thin so we're leaving that dark because the moment that I, I brushed it up with my finger, I lifted it, you could see it's really light there. So I leave it really dark there to make it look like it's not light. It gives the illusion that he doesn't have any issues there. Now we're blending out that first guideline with the, with the um, wall magic clips closed. Here we're taking out the next guideline with the number one guard closed. And you could go above these guidelines, maybe like a quarter inch, up to a half an inch. I would say if you have no guard on and you're taking out that first guideline, no more than a quarter inch with the magic clips closed. Um, with the number one guard, you could go up like three quarters of an inch. Because you're really going to clean that up with the blade open or the half guard in between to make that, that fluid transition, that blend. And you can see I'm stretching the scalp. 
for these more um, dense areas. Here we have the number two guard. And this is gonna be kind of our base. The number two guard and number two guard open. That's gonna blend to the top. And we'll do that all the way around. So here we have the one and a half guard. Not to be confused with number one open. There's the one and a half guard to extra guard that you know pretty much only wall you has. I believe um there's some other brands, new brands or upcoming brands that just introduced them, but wall wall is the creator of the one and a half guard. And that pretty much is supposed to make it easier to blend between the one guard and the two guard. And here we're just doing a little bit of detail. You can see the blend came together. And we're doing pretty much essentially the same exact thing on the other side. Another way, you know, like right here I'm using the T outliner. If you see a little line um, so that you don't get lost, just take it out right away. There's nothing wrong with, with, with switching clippers real quick. That way you don't get lost in the cut. Now if, you, if, you're, if you've if you been cutting here for a while now and you know your, your lengths and you can look at, you know, a line and, and know right away what you need to use to take it out, then keep, you know, keep it moving. At the end of the cut, you can touch things up. But if you're if you're learning, it's much easier to stay organized if you take it out right away. And you can see I use uh, I'm using corners and stuff as I'm detailing because we use the blade open to create that line that we're trying to take out. So um, you know if you go above the line you created with the blade that you created with, then you can use the corners. And it's a little bit more forgiving when you go up a little bit past that guideline. And here there was a little bit of dense, a dense area here. I'm going with my number one guard closed using the corners to lighten it up some. To make it look like it's the same density all the way around. And just like on the other side we have our number two guard. That's our base. The, the highest we're going is a two open to blend into the 1.5 um, that we did with the grain. Here we have the 1.5, the one and a half guard. Same thing we did on the other side. Started out open, we'll close it all the way, right underneath the, one, the, the blade open. And if we have to touch it up some, we will. We'll go back with the one guard open. You know, once once you're done with these steps, you know you don't have to stop there. You can you can detail the cut. Sorry, my kids in the background making ruckus. Show must go on though, right? Gotta get it done. Number one guard, and it's open. You can see the lever is open right here. Pay attention throughout the cut. You know whether the lever is closed or open. For me, this is this was one of the hardest cuts to to get down to feel comfortable doing, to feel like if I did it on the client, he'd be satisfied. This was like the last cut that I, I felt like I got pretty good at. And you could do a fade like this with any any type of haircut. You know, if you want to have a, a, a bunch of length on the top, you could still do a blend like this, and it would look dope. It's just pretty much instead of doing like a, a fade, the same um, the same angle the whole way around. You're more so contouring the head shape with this blend. And right here at the back, I sped it up because it's the same steps. So I made it twice as fast here. The trick here with connecting it um, to the back, the sides, is just make sure you're, you're cutting it. If you're trying to connect it, cut it to the angle that somebody would see um, if it's connected or not, right? 
So you turn the chair, use the chair to turn it and make sure it looks like it's connected to the sides. The back is connected to the sides from any angle that you turn the chair. You can see at this angle, it looks pretty connected. We're still cleaning it up some, but you'll see how it comes together. I think the half guard here really, really brings it together. You can see it as we're going. Jay hits on the beat. There it is. It looks pretty well connected. Shout out to Jay Hits for this beat. It was a dope beat. Really cool guy. I'll leave a link in the description for his his channel. And just a reminder, if you are in Romania or if you are in Orlando, the 3rd to the 5th, make sure you go to the Orlando premiere. It's the biggest hair show in the world. And the weekend after that, your boy will be in Romania. So I'm excited to record all that and share it with you guys. All right, so here we're using my custom trimmers, my Iron Mans, I want to call them. B Carter has a different name for them, but since I put the gold blade on them, that 360 GZ gave me, I, I, we've had to rename them. You can see they're hitting, man. I, I feel like once you start lining up the C cup or the arch, the, the the blend really comes together. So here I always start in the middle, and then um, after that I'll start to the, the the most troublesome area and connect it to the to the middle without pushing it back too much, without making it too cosmetic. But the middle seems to be my guideline to my corners, right? Remember, the hairs here are really long, so that's why I, I brushed it over to the right and, and caught some of the loose hairs. Because that, that hair um, at the peak of the C cup or the peak of the arch is, is really light. Like, if I was to run a one and a half through there, it would look like I patched them. Right here. That's the spot I'm talking about. I left that hair really long. That hair is probably like a, a four. See once we put the once we put the arch in, the cut really comes together. And I try not to push the arch in too much. Like I know some barbers do push it in a lot. I, I try to I try to keep that arch, you know, the least cosmetic as I as possible without you know sacrificing the sharpness and the crispiness of the edge. See how that hair is super long? I'm telling you, if I would have ran a one and a half or something like that, or a two there, it would look like I patched them. But it gives the illusion, once it's brushed and it looks good, it gives the illusion that nothing, you know, that there is no lightness there. See how the blend comes together, the whole cut came together. And you can get those trimmers along with the shave gel and the straight razor I'm using, 245 at 245.com if you're looking for, for a good shave gel for a good um, straight razor that has an even weight throughout the razor um, it includes three cartridges each cartridge has a different length of blade look no more 245 and we'll have a booth at the Orlando Premiere I believe it's booth 5784 if you look on my Instagram, I just posted the booth number. So I look I look forward, man, to, to meeting everybody out there. Jay hits on the beat. And to meet everybody in Romania. It's crazy. I'm just gonna touch up his eyebrows real quick. I didn't I didn't spend a lot of time recording it. 
because it was kind of last minute. He told me he wanted his eyebrows done, so we just did it real quick. I would say like nine out of ten of my clients get their eyebrows done. I don't know how it is in your market, but that's how it is for me. And it's the finished product, man. Hope you guys like it. Hope you guys learned something. Smash the like button. Hit the comment section. Share the video. All that good stuff. And if you're new to my channel, we drop videos like this all the time. Make sure you subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. As always, much love.